Building an oscillator out of a relay seems an interesting idea, since with such a circuit on your workbench, you can do a lot of cool things, like flickering LEDs, testing buzzers, or even stepping up DC voltage. In this video, I want to share with you this relay-based oscillator, explain its working principle, and how to use it in a boost converter to step up DC voltage. We're gonna deal with noisy relays today, so get ready and let's start our video! Before diving into our topic, I want to let you know that in my next video, I'm going to share more cool oscillator based circuits. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Now let's begin with revealing the secret behind this relay based oscillator. When energizing the relay coil while the relay is at its normal state, the electrical current in this circuit will take this path, leading the relay switch to change its state. Now guess what will happen? As you may have noticed, now the circuit is not connected to ground anymore. This will lead the relay switch to return to its normal state when the relay coil loses its energy. But this is not the end yet. Since now, the circuit is connected to ground, which means that the relay will be energized and the relay switch will change its state again. This process will go on forever as long as there is potential difference across the relay coil. But hold on, there's something wrong in this circuit design, right? Well, if you used to watch my videos, you will notice that there's missing diode parallel to the relay coil. Yes, of course it's the freewheeling diode. Now let me show you the importance of this component. So I've just constructed the same circuit with and without a freewheeling diode on a breadboard and connected the oscilloscope props across these terminals. Now let's see the difference in performance. Obviously, the freewheeling diode managed to remove the unwanted voltage spikes from the output and made the oscillator output signal more close to a square wave, but it's not perfect due to these pulses. So what's the reason behind their formation? Well, this topic is well explained in switch bouncing effect and the bouncing circuit episode, so make sure that you watch that video if you want to learn more about this phenomenon and how to deal with it. There's one more trick to talk about. Connecting a power capacitor to the relay coil will slow down the relay switching frequency because now the relay coil will take more time to be energized since during this time the capacitor is getting charged as well. So as an experiment I will be connecting different capacitor values parallel to the relay coil to change its switching frequency and let's see what will happen. We have seen that as the parallel capacitor capacitance increased, the relay switching frequency decreased. Now it's time to put this oscillator in action and test it with different loads. After understanding the working principle of relay based oscillator, you may ask how can this circuit step up DC voltage? Well, to answer this question, we need to understand the working principle of boost converter first. From the circuit diagram shown, while the relay switch is at its normal state, the voltage source will energize the relay coil which will change the relay switch state. At this point, both the relay coil and the voltage source will supply the load, leading the output voltage to be higher than the input voltage. And since the relay coil is connected in series, the voltage across it won't be enough to keep the switch at normally opened position. So, it will return back to its normal state. And the whole process will loop back again. And here comes the role of other circuit components. 
The series diode will ensure that the current in the circuit will flow only in one direction, which is input to output, and the shunt capacitor will stabilize the voltage in order to have almost pure DC at the output. Now it's time to build this circuit on a breadboard and see how it works in action. As you have seen, we could obtain around 35 volt at the output from 5 volt input. So how could we reach that value? Well, of course it's not magic, but there is a formula used to calculate the theoretical value of the boost converter output, and it is derived from the inductor stored energy balance relationship. I won't be diving into theory right now, so you can stop the video here if you want to have a look at the formula derivation steps. Or if you guys are interested in this topic, I may do a complete separated video about boost converter. Let me know your feedback in the comment section below. In order to find out what the theory tells us about the boost converter output voltage, we have a missing parameter we need to find, which is the switching duty cycle. So to get this parameter, let's hook up the oscilloscope probes to the circuit and let's see what we can get. As we have seen, the duty cycle value was fluctuating between 12 and 14%. So I will consider 13 for my calculations. But wait a second, this is not the real duty cycle value. Because what we observed on the oscilloscope was the duty cycle during the discharge of the relay coil, but this is not what we need. Fixing this problem is quite easy. We just need to take out 13 out of 100 and this will give us the duty cycle according to T on time while the inductor is getting charged. After obtaining all the necessary parameters, now we can apply the formula, which gives us a result that's very close to the real value. Unfortunately, this is not the way of building a boost converter because the system doesn't contain feedback loop, which means that the output is not regulated at all and it will drop the instant a load is connected. Now let me show you what happens when connecting a load to the circuit. This brings me to the end of this video. Please let me know your feedback in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.